Today is a very dark, wet and miserable Monday the 21st of November and welcome to another week in toys. Uh, I've just got back from the school run hence my hair is all wet and horrible and a mess but never mind. Uh, I've received a parcel today from Star Action Figures and this is the beginning of Hasbro's Assault on Our Wallets in November, December. In the next couple of weeks we're going to have the same amount of waves released in the main line as we've had all year long. Uh, Legacy Wave uh, 3 are due to hit, well they've hit now in certain stores, Star Action Figures have them. Uh, and then uh, Evolution Wave 1 is meant to hit on the 14th of December according to Pulse. So let's have got this first parcel, as I said this is from Star Action Figures and it's got the first figure in from Legacy Wave 3. And I only ordered this one from Star Action Figures because I pre-ordered the rest from Comics and Cocktails and this one wasn't on there. But loads of bubble wrap. Massive box for such a little figure. <laughs> Actually, it looks a big figure in a small box. It is. Point blank. Um, so this is the first figure I'm picking up from Legacy Wave 3. And uh, yeah, he is a Autobot. He is a Target Master. And uh, yeah, I mean, he, he's one that I'm, I am excited about. I've got crosshairs up there, so I've almost got the uh, another trifecta of Target Masters, which will be pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really wanting the dead end to go on my Menasaur, but he's on pre-order from Comics and Cocktails. Same with Crankcase and also the Armada Starscream. I haven't pre-ordered Skullgrim yet, so I might see if I can pick him up in person. But yeah, point blank here. Awesome little figure. Looks great. Um, looks big for a deluxe. Really excited to, to get him out of the packaging. Today I picked up Point Break and Peacemaker, the latest figure from the Legacy line. And starting off with Peacemaker here, the Target Master. He's a return to a G1 style Target Master. No articulation. Um, and a really simple transformation, but he works really well. And here is the main event. Point Blank himself is an awesome figure. Uh, in hand, he looks a lot better than those photos. Unfortunately, mine has a paint scratch on the eye and a little bit of a loose hit, but Hasbro got a Hasbro. And uh, yeah, on the back, some gaps, but what do you expect for a deluxe? Uh, Peacemaker can fit into Point Blank's hand, which is pretty awesome, as you would expect. Elbow articulation is a bit inhibited by this piece here. Uh, and here he is in car mode. Pretty awesome. Good looking car. Really like the paint on the wheels. A uh, little bit of an eyesore there on the, with a gap, but never mind. And Peacemaker can attach in car mode on the back here. And I think that works really well. Overall, an awesome figure. Relatively well done. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Today is Wednesday the 23rd of November. And last night, the, car the invoice carnage started. Uh, comics and cocktails got a load of stuff through uh, i think i ended up with about 12 bloody emails for four different products legacy wave uh three the other figures that i got on pre-order and that uh magenta colored hot rod animation colored g1 hot rod as well so last night was very expensive and i wasn't expecting anything to come today i know shooty had sent me something but this parcel arrived uh, and I know where it's from now because I already opened it up but I looked at it in confusion thinking have I ordered something for me son for Christmas or something uh, but anyway this is from my good mate John uh, who bought a load of stuff on eBay the other day and uh, yeah he sent me some bits out there it really confused me when I opened it up though because I put my hand in the first thing I found was this which is one of these little toy box mini uh, mini brand like uh, miniature figures 50 to collect five toys inside so we'll open that up together but i think he sent it me because of that little bubble we there so cheers john we'll see what other toys are inside uh be interested to see so we'll open it up in a minute but i think that the main reason for him sending me uh these bits is he got these figures uh parts of figure in his in his lot that he got off ebay loads of stuff in there he had um I think it was a G1 Galvatron in there and some Seacons. And what is sent me, the lovely, lovely bloke, is uh, the feet to uh, Pyracon or Piranacon or whatever you want to call him. Now, I don't know if I've got this configuration right, but uh, the feet go on him like here, like so. I'm going to have to have a look at uh, getting the hands now. I think the hands are the only bits I'm missing for the main robot. And yeah, I don't know if this configuration is right. I need to look, but. Awesome, so thank you John, you're an absolute legend. Uh, thank you for helping me 
virtually complete my Pyrocon now, just need the hands, uh, which I'll have a look at picking up either like this year or in the new year. Maybe at the NAC to be fair, I'll have a look for them. But that's awesome. So cheers, John. Thanks for sending me those. And let's have a look what we've got in this little mini brand thing. So uh, we open it up and we have the little bubblebee figure, which is awesome. It can actually be slid out by the look of it. Uh, so you can get the figure out. It's pretty well detailed, and actually, it wouldn't look bad on like the arc or you know the little figures that you got with. I think it was Galvatron, wasn't it? The movie Galvatron. I think yeah, that's awesome. That is. So cheers, John. I put that on my little on my little shelf down here. It can live down there on display. That's awesome. Let's have a look what else we got in here. Then so I mean, there's loads of other brands. You get Monopoly, Transformers. Loads of other stuff. I think there is a star screen thing you can get as well. So it'd be awesome if we, we end up with a star screen. Um, but yeah, let's open these up and see. Uh, we have got a Ouija. Ouija? Ouija? Ouija board? Game? That must be a game. So yeah, we got that. This is so odd. So cool, but so odd. So, so what else we got? We've got. Oh, we got a little Barbie! Oh, I could have sent that to Dave so he can go with his dollies. Oh, little Barbie! Awesome. Uh, we've got another, a few in here. We've got another Cardiff figure here. It'd be good if it's like a G.I. Joe or Star Wars or something like that. Oh, we have a little mini Hot Wheels car. That's cool. It's telling me to collect them all and I must do that because I'm an 80s child. That's cool, little hot rod, uh, hot wheels car even. And uh, the last one. Oh my god, this is what's this? Let's have a look. What we got? Oh my little pony. Oh <laughs> so random. So it tells you what you can get, I think. World's smallest. I wonder if there's penis is on here. Let's have a look. Right, so, ah, so there is, there's like a uh, Power Ranger, two Transformers, a G.I. Joe, looks like Duke, that does. There's three minor little ponies, Monopoly, Connect Four, a Nerf gun. Uh, now these, these are like rarer ones, apparently. Uh, oh, there's a Skeletor, that'd be quite cool. Uh, Barbie, He-Man, Hot Wheels. Oh, these are pretty cool. Now, cheers, John. I don't know what, what made you uh, buy these for me, but I'm happy you did because they're absolutely awesome. So, thank you, mate. Uh, right, I have got a parcel from a shooty. Uh, this is uh, on the back of him basically letting me know that he got some junkers, and the junkers will help me complete that, uh, hopefully, that scorpionot figure. I got from Rollout Roll Call and help increase the uh, the condition of the Kumpel Zone of it as well. Um, so I mean, like this, this is going to be awesome. I really, I hope as well that I'll be able to use parts from the Scorpion up figure to fix my Black Zarak of the same mould. Who is sent me? Let's have a look. This is Kumpel Zone. Who? I know he's missing his... He's not in that bad condition at all. I know he's missing this part here. But yeah, this, this is the compost zone that, that Shooty sent me. I think there's some issue with, with this part, which is fine. But this is the compost zone I got from, from Rollout Roll Call. And uh, overall, I think the one Shooty sent me is actually in a bit better condition. So it might be a fact of swapping some parts out, swapping his backpack, looking at that. But yeah, so I'm going to try and make one really good crumple zone out of that. More aesthetic stuff here, not necessarily bits missing. It's just the condition, like there's paint chips on certain parts and yellowing on certain parts. So I'll, I'll mix those around and make a decent crumple zone. So thank you very much for that, Dave. It'd be interesting to see what's missing off this one. Because it might just be... But... I think this has actually got most of the parts. It's just missing. Is it missing a foot? 
Today's Sunday, the 27th of November. I'll be wearing a hat all day, hence why the do is like this. Um, but just to update you, I managed to take the two Scorpion Art figures that I have got and create a... I'd say a decent version of Scorpionok. Um, unfortunately, this figure really suffers with GPS gold plastic syndrome, uh, and I didn't think it would. Um, and like in these sections here, it doesn't. But these panels here actually have posts on the back. I don't know if I've got. Um... Yeah. So this is the other Scorpionok, and you can see here uh, part of this is broken off. The other one's been completely removed. And basically these are gold plastic posts that go all the way through and they keep shearing off and when they shear off the front bits break off as well. Um, I actually had a bit of a breakage on, uh, this is mainly Dave Shotton's figure to be completely honest with you. Did swap a few parts on it but I did have a breakage on it where the top part here sheared off completely. Um, similar to what's happened on this one here. Uh, now I managed to repair it, glue it on, screw it back in and then the post snapped off as well. So I've managed to get him back together and he's in decent decent condition now but I think this must be an ongoing issue with this figure. He's lovely though, it's such a great figure. I've got the Black Zarak version, I think I mentioned this earlier on, uh, and I'm going to get him out of the loft and try and use the other parts from that Scorpion up to, to try and permanently repair that one, because that one broke as well on me. He's missing a few more pieces than I thought he was, there's meant to be some like exhaust ports that come up here, and of course his Cyber Planet, Planet Key and the Missiles, but all in all, cheers Dave, awesome to complete a Scorpion up. you are an absolute legend, he's great. Um. Now today, I went and picked up a couple of items I found on the Facebook Marketplace, and hello Sam. Uh, funnily enough, after I visited Sam to pick up these two items, I was recommended to him on YouTube, so now he's a subscriber, so there you go. Hello Sam, and cheers for the amazing deals you've done me on these two figures. Um, the first one I picked up uh, was Galvatron. Uh, this is the Studio Series figure. I'm not massively into me Baylor stuff, but I was tempted to pick up this figure because it was Frank Welker doing the voice and everything in the film, even though the film is a crock of shit, isn't it, really? Uh, but yeah, but I didn't, didn't really want to pay the price. Um, and you can see here what Sam's paid for it, nearly 40 quid. Uh, he let me have it for 15, which is an awesome price. And uh, here is the figure. He's a lot smaller than I thought he would be. Um, I mean, just to compare him with, compare with Scorpion here, you can see the size difference on this. Um, compare him next to Point Blank here, you can see there's not that much difference between a, a Deluxe and a Voyager figure. Now, th this has got some flaws. Um, the alt mode has a terrible like kibble bit on the, on the back trailer section. Um, and he is a little bit thin, but considering how they've had to make this look completely different in both modes, I think I'd accept it. I think if it was a if it was a leader figure, then I think they could have got a lot more, a lot more engineering, and it maybe did a little bit more with the chest to make it less flat. But all in all, I actually think this is a decent figure. Is it worth forty quid? I don't think it is. Is it worth what I paid for it? Absolutely, and that's probably what. I'm thinking about this. This is value for money for me. He's very light. Thanks for that, Sam. Awesome price and a pretty decent figure, to be honest with you. Uh, I did pick up another item from Sam, and this is this is one of the things where I never really thought I would get this. Um, but I saw that, obviously, at Galvatron. And when, when I knew I wanted to pick up Galvatron, you always have a look, don't you, to see what else is on there. And this was on there. This is the Beast Hunters Transformers Prime Megatron Shark Decon kind of figure. It's a weird thing, but I actually really, really like it. I think the flaws with this are the flaws with the Megatron mould as a whole. I mean, this struggles to to tab into the arms as it should do. Um, basically because the arms have got no outward movement, and you want a little bit of outward movement to pose. It comes with this bespoke weapon that... It's quite cool, actually. It's like, it looks like a shark, but you can actually extend it all out and flip the handle around to create a kind of bladed weapon which you can hold, which is pretty awesome. Um, he doesn't have his fusion can as such. This can, I suppose, tab on like that. And some of the, the joints of this are a little bit loose. 
I'm just hold that, it doesn't really hold in there, but you can put it in there. Uh, his hips were quite loose, so I've repaired those with a little bit of uh, nail polish, so now they're a little bit a little bit tighter. Um, but yeah, he's a lovely figure. Uh, he's an oddity, and I kind of like these oddities at the moment. Um, I like picking up the, I suppose, the odd repaints in, in a way. I mean, I picked up uh, old Megatron here, didn't I, in, in last week's Week in Toys, a bit of an oddity repaint from back in the day. Um, so yeah, but yeah, he, he's pretty cool. He's pretty cool. The the Megatron mold as a whole, I mean, I I love the design of it, but it isn't the best, is it really? Um, but with that said, the APC toys did a really cool version, which I regret not picking up. Um, but yeah, I haven't got a version of this mold on display, and because it's a little bit of an oddity, I thought, why not? I will, I'll get this and I'll stick it on display. So thank you for that one, as well, Sam. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this week in toys. Uh, I was hoping that uh, Wave 3, the rest of Wave 3, would have arrived by now. They have been shipped on Wednesday by Comics and Cocktails, along with my Magenta G1 Hot Rod. Um, but in reality, with the postal strikes, they haven't even been picked up yet, unfortunately. Uh, and with more strikes happening on Wednesday and Thursday of this week, um, I, I think it's unlikely I'm going to get them before the next weekend, which is frustrating. <laughs> anyway... I hope you enjoyed uh, this little video and until next time I've been Zork Rider and I'll catch you again very very soon.